to um, veer off of our study of the book of Acts for a couple of weeks uh, because we are preparing to go into a 21-day fast. And for those that um, fasting is new to you, you think 21 days? But it really won't be as hard as you may think. Uh, amen. As we do it together as a body of believers. And um, as we get into it, you'll find out what kind of fast we're doing. There are several kind of fasts uh, that you can do. But for 21 days, um, we are going to kind of gradually uh, fast. Uh, well, we're going to fast the whole 21 days, but we're going to gradually take off things. Amen? Amen? Amen. If you can turn in your Bibles uh, to Daniel, the 10th chapter. to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to get right on into our study for tonight. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, on this first uh, Wednesday of the new year, that we have a mind to be in the house of the Lord. Father, I thank you and I praise you for Jesus today. I thank you, Lord, for all that he has done for us, and as many have testified, he has been good. He has been faithful. You have been faithful, Lord. And you have been good. And we thank you and praise you uh, for how you brought us through uh, 2012. Even though it may not have been an easy road, Lord, there have been some real bumps in the road and some real challenges, uh, Lord, in that year. But you brought us through, and we are here to see a new year begin. And we thank you and praise you for that. I thank you, Lord, uh, for the lesson on tonight. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way and that you would speak to our hearts, speak to us where we live, and help us to prepare to uh, get into that place where uh, we, we have a deeper, a deeper communion with you, Lord, as we fast and seek your face at the top of the year. Have your way, Lord. Have your way uh, during this time of our study. And we'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to say um, we are preparing for a 21-day fast, and you heard that, but it's fasting and prayer. It's so important that we know the two go hand in hand. If we're not fasting and praying, then... Uh, we are doing, I mean, the world fast too. Uh, but we want to be on a spiritual fast. A spiritual fast. And if it's going to be a spiritual fast, it must involve fasting and prayer. Prayer is so important uh, that we spend time uh, praying and seeking the face of God during this fast. I remember early in my life when uh, I was challenged to fast, uh, I was so, um, I was spending all my energy in getting through the fast that I didn't realize I was supposed to be praying, you know, and in the Word of God during that time. And it would have been a lot easier for me uh, had I uh, been in the Word of God and doing those things. Uh, but I was really excited I got through the fast. But for, for you to have the spiritual um, effect that you want to have in your life. Uh, it's so important that you spend the time that you would use to eat. You spend it praying or spend it in the Word. Spend it uh, doing the things that will make you stronger as people of God. Amen? Stronger in the things of God. But I want to uh, look at Daniel, uh, the 10th chapter. Uh, Daniel went on a 21-day fast. And uh, a lot of, well, we have a fast that we call the Daniel Fast, and it, it's com it comes from this particular chapter. 
Daniel 10, verse 1 through 21. And it reads, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. Uh, the message was true, but the, uh, the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had under understanding of the vision. So he had a message and a vision from the Lord. In those days, in those days, Daniel was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, nor meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, that is, the Tigris, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold of, of Euphas, of, how do you say that? Euphas, or Euphas. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like, uh, like uh, bar varnished, bronze in color, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. So he was, he was in a place with some men, uh, but he was the only one that saw the vision. But a great terror fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone when I saw this great vision and no strength remained in me. For my vigor was turned to frailty in me and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the sound of his words. And while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face with my face to the ground. Suddenly a hand touched me which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved. Don't you like that salutation? Don't you like that? Mm -hmm. For God to greet you that way. O Daniel, man greatly beloved. And he does greet us that way. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. I, wanna, um, I just want to settle a little bit on that particular verse because fasting does exactly uh, what is being said here. And it said that because it, uh, God said, well, Jesus, it is believed that he had a vision of Jesus himself. It says, then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand. And uh, I think about this fast, you know, Pastor uh, talked about uh, this fast being called a new wine fast. And uh, he, he, he gave us the reference of that in Mark 2, 21 through 22. We'll look at that uh, too. But it's the parable of not being able to put new and fresh wine into old wineskins, a natural analogy uh, that was applicable back then, uh, but we can still learn some things now. And what it means is God uh, wants to do a new and a fresh thing in us in this day and time, but something has to happen to the old wineskins, you know, to our vessels, to the person that we are, that we might receive this new wine. Amen? But uh, the thing that I want you to note here is Daniel, he said, from the first time you set your heart, how did he say that? He said, oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. Uh, let me jump down. It says, 
For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. And so we can be encouraged going into this fast because we have set our hearts to fast at the top of the year, to seek the face of God, to prepare ourselves to receive more of what God wants to do in this year. Amen. And, uh, and uh, Jesus said to Daniel, because you have set your heart to do this, because you have set your heart to do this, and I want to say to you individually, you know, we are a part of a body, and pastor in my heart is that every one of us would do something. We don't know where you're at uh, exactly in your faith and in your, um, in your experience of fasting, um, but there is something you can do for 21 days to honor God. Amen. Amen. But we are believing for the body of believers that are used to fasting to go on this 21 days. Don't play it off. Because know that the Spirit of the Lord knows if you have set your heart individually. Have you set your heart towards God? For at the moment Daniel had set his heart, okay, at the moment he had made up his mind that he was going to do this thing because he wanted understanding. He was fasting for understanding. We are fasting as a body for new wine. But you may also have some personal things that you are looking for God to do. Amen. But at the moment that he had set his, set his heart to understand and to humble himself. Fasting is humbling. How many know fasting is humbling? Amen. It humbles this flesh like nothing else. Fasting will humble you. I think about what Pastor, Pastor said, that, uh, things can happen to him while he's uh, not fasting, you know, uh, say somebody can uh, rub him the wrong way and uh, he may say something back to him, you know, or he may even argue with them if it called for it. But when he's fasting, he said he don't feel like arguing with anybody. But you know yourself, when you're fasting, when you're humbling this flesh, uh, it, 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 um, it causes you to react differently than you would normally react. And it also uh, causes you to have enlightenment spiritually. I don't know about you, but it causes me to be more in tune with God than I normally am. And when I have a speaking engagement or something like that, I, I, I fast. And when I fast, what it does is it makes me keener. You know, and more sensitive. But it will do that to each one of us, wherever we're at. There are some things that we need to perceive. We need to understand. We need to hear uh, from the spirit of the living God. Amen. That will transform our lives. That will change some things. That will get us out of some situations and circumstances that we're in. Uh, but we don't know that we need a certain information. We need some certain information. Uh, from the Lord. But I want you to know this, you know, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, you know, make up your mind you're going to do this. I'm going to humble myself before the Lord. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief uh, uh, princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refer, refers to many days yet to come. And when he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face towards the ground and became speechless. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the Son of Man touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him, who stood, be who stood before me? My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? 
He said, how can I talk with you? As for me, no strength remained in me now, nor is any breath left in me. This is Daniel speaking to the Lord. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. You can expect to be strengthened through this fast. Amen. Some of you, well, you can expect, I would say put your expectancy out there, but you can expect to have an encounter with God. Some of you need to expect to have a vision, to see God in ways that you wouldn't normally see him. Amen. But Daniel was strengthened, he said, and he strengthened me. And he said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. So when I spoke, so when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Then he said, Do not know, do you know why I have come to you? And now I must re return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. No one opposes me against these except Michael, your prince. Okay, what's going on in here is he... He sees a vision, and the Lord speaks to him, and the Lord strengthens him. But then he goes back and says, I am going to fight uh, with the prince, or I had to fight with the prince of Persia because he hindered me for 21 days. 21 days, Daniel wondered if the Lord had heard him. He wondered about an answer to his prayers. But there are uh, forces of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness that opposes the people of God. Amen? And try to stop us in our tracks and try to keep us from getting all that God has for us. But there is some place in the New Testament that said these things come out not but by prayer and fasting. And some things, some breakthroughs, we will not get unless we pray and fast. Amen? Amen. Amen. But uh, this is a good passage of scripture for you to meditate on because it, 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 it really uh, reveals some things. And it also uh, can cause us to have expectancy. You know, expectancy. Uh, what God did for Daniel, he'll do for us. Amen? Yes. He is not a respecter of persons. What he did for Daniel, he'll also do for us. I want to read... Um, there are, uh, on your sheet, there are scriptures for meditation, and I read the first one. I want to read Isaiah 58, uh, 6 through 14. I'm not going to read all of these scriptures, and you, you, will be a, you will have a time to read them on your own. But we do want to read Isaiah, and, uh, because it has some good things to say to us as we um, prepare ourselves to fast. Isaiah 58, 6 through 14. I really should have brought a Bible with uh, bigger letters in it. So I'm going to ask somebody to come up and uh, read Isaiah 58, 6 through 14. I like this Bible because it is a study Bible, but the writing in it is very small, and this lighting makes it really hard for me to see it. But uh, if someone can come, Isaiah 58, 6 through 14. Thank you. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Is this not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of, your, of the finger, and the speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness 
and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones and you shall be a water, like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Yes. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the light, the holy day of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. What a powerful passage of scripture. And it's talking about the fast that God desires and the purposes and the reasons for us to fast. That the bands of the bonds of wickedness be loosed, uh, that undo to undo the heavy burdens, uh, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are, are cast out when you see the naked? And it goes on and on and on to talk about the things that were being worked in our lives as we fast. Amen. As we fast. So it's an excellent uh, passage to meditate on and uh, uh, to look at as we prepare ourselves to fast. Amen. Amen. Uh, the theme scripture uh, comes from Mark 2, 21 through 22. And we're going to look at that. And uh, this is our theme scripture, and it says, No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, or else the new piece pulls away from the old, and, tear, and the tear is made worse. And no one pull, puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine bursts the wineskins, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But new wine must be put into new wine skins. Amen. And so we are, we are fasting. The purpose of our fast is to prepare ourselves to receive all that God has for us in 2013. And that's the purpose of doing it at the top of the year. You know, that we might prepare ourselves as new wine skins for fresh wine or fresh oil fresh anointing uh, upon our lives. Amen? Amen. And uh, so to prepare ourselves to receive all God has for us in 2013, new wine, and to strengthen us against all temptations and the attacks of the enemy. Uh, to strengthen ourselves. You know, fasting and prayer will strengthen you. Amen? There's some other things that we need to do to strengthen us, and that is get in the Word and, and be among the saints, fellowship with the saints, and, and different things like that. But fasting and prayer will strengthen you uh, spiritually. You know, I believe Jesus was able to withstand the enemy uh, because of the 40-day fast he was on. You know, even though the enemy came with him with the very thing that uh, he was giving up, the enemy came to him with, turned this, these stones into bread. You know, he was hungry and the enemy came at him uh, in his weakness, time of weakness, but because he was fasting, he was able to withstand the enemy. And when you're fasting, and if you have a fasted life, you know, where you um, fast, uh, periodically. I know we do it once a year, 21 days, but throughout the year, there should be, we do have our Tuesday, the day of fasting and prayer, but there should be throughout the year, 
uh, we should be fasting. That should be one of our disciplines along with reading the word, praying, coming to church, and uh, things as such. Amen? Amen. 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 The mics are open and you can come and uh, ask a question or if you want to get clarity, you can come for that purpose too. Beginning your fast. How you begin and conduct your fast will largely determine your success. By following uh, the seven basic steps to fasting, you will make your time with the Lord more meaningful and spiritually rewarding. Uh, and uh, on this sheet, I have uh, uh, seven steps, and we're going to look at them. Successful fasting. Number one, you want to set your objective. Why are you fasting? And we talked about we're doing a corporate fast. Sometimes you do individual fasts. Sometimes there are things going on in your life, in your family, uh, things uh, you need to break, you know, you need a breakthrough, or, you know, there could be a number of reasons why you may fast individually, or fast with, you know, a husband and wife may fast for a particular thing. Uh, but we're, we're on a corporate fast. And so we, we have been given our objective and we know what we're fasting about. But that's not to say that if there's some personal things uh, going on in your life, you can believe God for those things too. But you want to set your objective. Why are you fasting? Is it for spiritual renewal, for guidance, for healing, for the a resolution of problems, for special grace to handle a difficult situation, what is God's direction to you? In our case, Pastor has set the objective. This fast is to prepare ourselves for a fresh anointing, to be strengthened and favored, a greater grace to go to the next level in our lives. We're calling this fast a new wine fast. Okay, amen, amen. So that's our objective, amen, fresh oil. Fresh anointing, you know, to prepare ourselves that we might uh, uh, be able to receive more uh, from God. Amen? Amen? Step two, make your commitment. How long will you fast? One meal, one day, a week, several weeks, 21 days, 40 days. If you can't do it, you can't say, well, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this, so I'm just going to take it day by day. I'm just going to take it one day at a time, and we'll see how far I get. Don't do it like that. I'm going to tell you, you're not going to go through 21 days. You're not going to get far like that. You have to set your goal ahead of time, and when you set your goal, the Holy Spirit will help you uh, to keep that goal. And the fact that we're on a corporate fast, you know, corporate fasts are easier than individual fasts. How many have experienced that? Amen. Corporate fasts are a lot easier, you know, because you know that you're not the only one sacrificing. You're not the only one uh, that's going through, you know, in the flesh because you really uh, may be feeling the hunger pains or you may really be craving a particular thing. But you think about your other brothers and sisters going along uh, with you, you know, and it strengthens you. Not only that, we have times of prayer. We have prayer meetings. We have our midweek service. We have Sunday service. And when you come, uh, you'll find that while you're doing praise and worship, you'll have a heightened time of praise and worship. It's like the word of God is coming through clearer than ever before. It's amazing. But all of those things will help you to be successful in your fast. Amen? Amen? Amen. So you want to make your commitment ahead of time. In our case, the length of time is 21 days. What kind of fast is it? What kind of fast is it? Uh, I'm missing, I'm missing something. We're missing week one. Okay, week one got cut off. I'm going to have to... Uh, Huh. Okay. Well, week one is no sweets. You're taking the sugar out of your diet in That's week, week one. Two. That's week two? Yeah. Wait a minute. Well, week two is no sweets and no meats. Uh, yeah. Week 
Week one, you're starting with no sweets. You got it? Okay, week one, you're still eating meat. You know, you still may be eating meat and vegetables and, you know, whatever, but you're, you're taking the sugar out of your diet, week one. No sugar. No sugar. Okay, no sugar. No pop. Yeah, no pop, no cakes, pies, uh, no, don't sugar anything. I know that all of our food got some kind of sugar in it, you know, we, we're not. I'm sorry, you don't mean liquid. She means your coffee too. Yeah, yeah, no sugar. I mean, I think, I think some would, do we put on here, uh, to put away the coffee? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, some things are cut off, and I, I got to but we're starting out, we're taking away the sweets. Okay, yes. And I was, I was listening to you as you were reading that chapter of Daniel, uh -huh. and what really stood out uh, in one of those earlier verses is when he said he didn't eat any pleasant food. Mm. I was going to ask you, pleasant food, I wonder what that means, and then I was just thinking, when you said no sweets, I guess a good way for me to define what not to eat would be, I'm going to use that term pleasant food. Mm, that's good. You know? That's good. Yeah, I looked up what the pleasant food was. Okay. And it was, uh, it was actually, he took out uh, no sugar, there was no sweets, but he also took out the bread, uh, there was no bread, and, uh, and there was no wine you know, uh, wine, and uh, no sugar, you know, uh, at all in the food, no pleasant. Anything to make it like pleasant or, you know, he didn't do that. He only uh, did the, the, the vegetables and things, um, you know, that, that he needed to survive. Right, there was no, no bread. But uh, when I come back next week, I'll have that part that's been cut off. Back on. I had it uh, somewhere, but I didn't bring that, that piece of paper that I had it written on. Or did I? It, let me see that. <laughs> okay, I don't have it in here. And I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I have it in here. Because it would have been, uh, it's, a, it's a sheet of paper that I've written all over. But it's not in here, but I will bring it back for you. And you, and uh, um, week two is no sweets, desserts, candy, pop, etc., and no meats. No beef, no chicken, no fish, no pork. Can you guys, anything else you might think you want to ask about right now? Why don't we just get it all out in the open? <laughs> okay. 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 So I guess week two looks like, uh, yeah, week three is only fruits and vegetables. So it looks like two weeks of fruits and vegetables, is that right? No, but actually week two you can eat pasta. And cheese. Oh, Well, um, the Daniel was no milk and stuff, but we're not doing a, a straight Daniel fast. We're not doing a Daniel fast. So uh, we we'll don't have to think about that. But I, those things you can, in week two, you still can eat some things, okay? But no meat and no sugar. Yes. Um, okay, I put a little honey in my tea. <laughs> so, but that's natural. That's not. No honey? No sugar. No sugar. Honey is. Uh, it's still not sugar. Well, you know what? It has the same uh, effect. It has the same effect as sugar. In fact, I did a, a little study to find out if honey was better for us than sugar. And uh, most of the studies say that it is no better for us than sugar. 
that's what the studies say about honey. Uh, most, uh, a lot of our honeys, I mean, some may go and get the raw honey, but most of us are getting honey that is as bad as sugar or very equivalent to sugar. Yes. All right, like, uh, when you say, like, no sweets, like, uh, y'all already X'd out the bread, so if we can't eat bread, that means we can't eat stuff, like, a lot of white stuff, like, fries, like, rice and stuff like that. Well, uh, in week two, in week one, we're saying take out the sugar, what you know to be sugar substance. You know, uh, I didn't, we didn't say that you couldn't have bread, although I know some breads, but if you can find bread that doesn't have sugar in it. Yeah, cause yeah. I, I, uh, I've been working out lately, I've been doing my research on bread. Like, okay. Bread, like, uh, if you look it up on the internet, it, that's like a sugar bath. A like sugar bread, pie. Yeah. All the bread is sugar pie. The best bread you eat is like 100% like whole bread. Yeah. Why don't you sugar share about, about the taste? I think you're just going to have to be specific because potatoes, I mean, once you ingest this stuff, it turns to sugar. Potatoes turn to sugar right away. Yeah. So, you know, you. And you've got to determine the stuff you put in your mouth that's sweet yeah. or the stuff that turns sweet in your body. Bread, white stuff turns to sugar, right? Okay. Turns to sugar. Potatoes turns to sugar. So pasta right. turns to sugar. So is it the stuff that you put in your mouth that's sweet? Right. Is that what we're going to determine it's what, that's sweet? It's, it's uh, pleasant food was, was sweet to the taste. Yes, yeah, okay. that. Sweet to the taste. Pleasant food was sweet to the taste. And no sugar okay. substitutes. No. Right. All right, you know what? I think you guys know what you want to do. Now, we can take out all the food. <laughs> right, we can do water. <laughs> I just want to say, you know, that one of the things I want everybody to keep in mind as we, as we seek the Lord, uh, that, that this is between you and the Lord. Okay? It's between you and the Lord. We're not going to go around policing, you know, folks. You know, this, this is what you want to do. This is what you want to sacrifice. This is what you want to present to the Lord. And uh, you... All of us are going to get out of it what we put into it, no more, no less. So, so you know, I mean, we can, we can, you know, we can split hairs on this and that. And you, but you, all, each of us, know what is a sacrifice, okay? For one person, you know, something that they give up may not even be a sacrifice. It might, hey, somebody who who's a vegetarian, a vegan, you know, they give up meat. And all meals and things like that. So it's it, they, they have to do something else, you know. Uh, you know they may not even be lifted here. You know that may not. You know we may not mention it or it may not fall within the scope of that. You know what 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 would be a sacrifice for you, and it's between you and the Lord. And, and I'm not going to be. Oh, did you do this? No, you know. I mean, if you, you know, if you want to cheat on the test, then, then that's that's between <laughs> you know, as a figure of speech. If you want to, you want to do that. If you want to cheat, you know, you know, God's looking. He sees everything. Okay. And we're not going to be. Oh, did you do? Oh, we, oh, come on up here, repent. You know. Oh, we're going to beat you. You know. No, it's it's between you and the Lord. Okay. Some of us may fail to do even much more. You know, last year for the very first time, for the very first time, I did, I prayed all year long though, but I prayed and I said, God, I want to do a 21 day fast, no meats, just liquids, just liquids. No food. No food, no food. And, uh, you know, I was able to do it, you know, and I, I remember when I finished, I was like, man, I'm so glad. I didn't know that I could, I could even do that. And, uh, it was a challenge for me, but but the rewards were great. You know, I I I, I had a, I got a lot of control in my life. Uh, I spent sense the presence of God more in my life. I got more blessings. Uh, Jesus, when he fasted for those forty days and forty nights with no food, he he was doing it to prepare himself for what was getting ready to happen in his ministry. He was preparing himself yes. physically. He was preparing himself spiritually. 
He was preparing himself emotionally for what was getting ready to affect every ministry throughout history. What he was doing, what he was preparing for was going to impact every ministry. And so he had to prepare himself, strengthen himself, uh, get himself ready so that when temptations would come, he would, he would, he would be able to handle it. And that's why he did it. See, uh, one of the things that the devil's going to do is he's going to, this year, he's going to try to, okay, let's say you set some goals. Fasting will help you get those goals accomplished. You have to have mental strength to carry out those goals. Because if you don't have mental strength, then you'll go so far, you'll do oh, two months, and I uh, said I was going to wake up at five, uh, six o'clock and have devotional, and I made, that was my New Year's resolution, and you did that for two months. Well, what's gonna carry you beyond those two months? What, what kind of, what, where are you gonna get your strength from to carry out that commitment, or that those goals, or pursue those things? You know how we procrastinate, we say, oh, I got my 10 lists, the things I'm going to do at the beginning of the year and I'm going to carry this out. If we were honest with one another, you know, it hardly ever happens. But I tell you, when, when we fast, it, if something supernatural happens that takes place even beyond the time period that you're fasting, there's an impartation of strength that will come in your life, a new determination, a new fight, a new vigor. Uh, a, a new power rat will rise up on the inside of you. And uh, it, it's just one of the most rewarding things that, that, that we can do in terms of pre preparation for all that God has. Yeah. Uh, I believe God wants to give us some stuff. He can't give it to us if, we, if he know we can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, I think, uh, I think we get the point, right? Amen. 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 And so you can take it further if you want. If God is challenging you to go further, let's say we get to the, the last week and you feel the spirit of the Lord saying to you, no food, That's right. you know, just water. Then you want to do that. You know, you may get to the last three days and God say, you know, uh, uh, push back the plate, period, you know, and just do uh, the water, you know, or the water and the juice. But... What we're doing together, at least we're, you know, what we're doing, the least we're doing together is no pleasant food to the tongue, meaning no sugar that you are putting in your mouth and enjoying on your palate, okay? Let me just say one other thing. <laughs> it, it's, it's much easier doing the fast, us together as a group. It, it, it just, it's so much easier because we're egging each other on. We're coming to church every Wednesday and Sunday. And we're, we're challenging one another. And the Bible tells us to provoke one another. It, it, it's a lot harder doing it on your own. If any time you're going to fast that you should choose to fast, you should choose to fast when everybody's doing it. it it's just a lot easier. And you, just the benefits are just numerous. Amen. Amen. Well, how much time each day will you devote to prayer and the Word of God? How much time each day will you devote to prayer and the Word of God? In our case, you are to spend as much time as you can, at least three times a day in place of your meals. And some of you may say, well, I don't eat three times a day. I'll eat two times a day. Um, well, take that time that you usually will uh, spend eating or preparing meals and uh, spend that time with the Lord, amen? Yes. Even if you're on the job and you stop for lunch, well, you know you're not going to be eating, you know, so take your Bible, take, you know, uh, some of these scriptures to meditate on. Do something along those lines, amen? Yes. Uh, pray all day, and what do I mean when I say pray all day? How many know what we mean when we say pray all day? Okay, you understand what we mean. Can you come and share? What, what do we mean when we say pray all day? Well, um, what it means to me, Pastor Karen, is that your spirit is always praying. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're you're in a praying position, you know, or that you set yourself somewhere to pray. 
but that your spirit is always praying, that your mind is conscious of what your spirit is saying. That's right, that's right. That you're conscious, you're God conscious. You're going through out your day, conscious of the Lord, talking to him uh, as you walk, talking to him as you ride in the car, talking to him uh, in whatever you're doing throughout that day. So you don't have to be in a particular posture or in a particular place, but you want to be in an attitude of prayer all day long, communing with the Lord all day long, and you'll be amazed at how much the Holy Spirit will speak to you or how much you will be sensing uh, during that time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, okay. Uh, you don't want to watch TV for entertainment purposes. You know, just, you know, I can't eat, so I'm going to sit in front of TV. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm going to entertain myself in front of the TV, you know. You're going to defeat the purpose of your fasting. You know, what you're doing is uh, you're feeding the flesh, you know. And my daughter, my, my young adult daughter said to me, Mom, there's very little on the TV that will have any benefit to us, you know, when we fast. You know, except it's uh, actual, you know, the religious th uh, channels or stations where you're looking at, you know, where, you, where you're listening to someone preach the word or something like that. Most of the programs will have some profanity in it or some suggestions towards uh, sex or, you know, just some other things that you're not looking to feed yourself. Feed on during that time, okay? Feed your... You just said a word and Deborah asked me to ask. Wow. For the married couples, because I know some married is is this going to affect them? <laughs> well, that's that's a good question. I think where's Pastor? <laughs> We're gonna come back to that, okay? We're gonna come back to that question. Uh, there is a passage of scripture in 1 Corinthians where it talks about do not defraud one another except by agreement when you're setting aside time to fast and pray. Okay? When you're setting aside time to fast and pray. Three, prepare yourselves spiritually for fasting. Prepare yourself spiritually for fasting. The very foundation of prayer and fasting is repentance, okay? The very foundation of prayer and fasting is repentance. Unconfessed sin will hinder your prayers, all right? Um, because every man's ways are right in his own eyes, it is important to ask the Holy Spirit to show you your sin, amen? Most of us are not doing gross sin, you know? Most of us, are not going around cursing folk out if we've been safe for any length of time. We're not cursing folk out. Uh, we're not sleeping around. We're not doing a lot of the things that are known and obvious sins. But there may be some other things that we may be doing. You know, bad attitude. You know, um, uh, uh, sins of omission. Things God told us to do that we're just not doing. You know. Um, Want to get before the Lord like like David did and say, God, search my heart and try me. See if there be any wicked way in me. And then lead me in your way everlasting. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, come before him with a broken and a contrite spirit, you know. Uh, not like um, there's an example in, in the word of two men praying, one man who knew he was a sinner and he bowed down, could hardly even lift his head before God, crying out for his sins. Another man stood up and said, I thank you, God, that I'm not like this sinner. You know, but the Bible reprimanded that man with that proud attitude, like he was so right, you know, and this other man was so wrong. It's how we come before God. So we need to humble ourselves and allow God to show us ourselves, amen? There's always something that uh, the Holy Spirit is working on in our lives. And so we need to allow him to show us those things. Confess every sin the Holy Spirit brings to your attention and accept God's forgiveness. Uh, we're not talking about getting under condemnation, beating yourself down. Amen. 
We're talking about dealing with the issues, uh, the, uh, the things that we have done, dealing with them before God, and getting up and going on and serving the Lord. Amen? Amen. Um, so, um, confessing it and accepting God's forgiveness. Number three, seek forgiveness from all whom you have offended and forgive all who have hurt or offended you. And we have scriptures for that there, you know. It's so important, you know. Uh, a lot of times we, you know, it's, it's, we want to go before the Lord, you know, and talk to the Lord. But yet we are at odds with our brother or our sister. We're offended by something with our brother or sister. And we want to bypass that, act like that is not happening or is not going on and still have a, a free channel with the Lord. But it's not so. God says, when you come to me and you know you have a problem with your brother or sister, leave your offering and go and get that thing right, then come back to me. So we can't be at odds uh, with one another or offended um, with one another and not deal with those things and think we still have a you know, free channel. That'll block up or plug up you know, the channel. So you got to get those things right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, uh, so it may mean going to your brother, sister, calling them up or whatever. Not stirring stuff up, you know. Uh, uh, and what I mean by that, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, well, maybe I better pass that up right now. <laughs> well, let, I'll tell you what I mean by that, you know. Um, you know, sometimes you may think that there is a problem. You can go in and see if there's a problem, but sometimes you may conceive that there's a problem and there's not really a problem, you know. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, I've had people come and, and tell me that there was a problem, that I had a problem with them, and I didn't have a problem with them, you know. I didn't have a problem with them. And uh, so, but we were able to settle that. I don't have a problem with, you know, with you or whatever. And so... You want to get those things right. Just get that clear, clear, clear that, clear the air. Um, make restitution as the Holy Spirit leads you. If you stole something from somebody, and I'm not talking about going back 10 years in your life, unless the Holy Spirit is just dogging your heels about that. Get that thing right, you know. But if you know you, you took something and you didn't return it, and every now and then it comes back to your mind and you need to go ahead and return that and do whatever you need to do get that thing right you owe somebody some money you know you know you owe some money but every time you get the money there's something else you want to do no you gotta go and settle those things get that thing right amen amen uh surrender your will um let me back up be continuously filled with the holy spirit how do you do that Ephesians 5.18. Okay. Okay. Ephesians 5.18 says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dis... Uh, dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, and then it goes on to tell you how, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. You know, so, be not drunk with wine, whereas is dissipation but be filled with the spirit speaking to one another and singing you know when we have uh, times of fellowship like this and someone gets up and and sings a song and we all sing with them doesn't that kind of fill you up encourage you when someone really gives a, a good testimony of what god has done in their life doesn't that really encourage you you know and strengthen you when the word go forth and it really stirs you up uh, uh, in the things of God, you know. Uh, that's how you can uh, continuously be filled with the Spirit. Amen? You can turn on some good, godly uh, music at home 
and get encouraged and strengthened and, and see and feel yourself, sense yourself being filled with the Spirit. Uh, speaking in your prayer language, you know, will fill you up uh, with the Spirit of God. And things like that, praying, you know, you get off, you have a time uh, with the Lord in prayer, and you get up and you feel full of the Spirit of God. How many have ever experienced that? Amen. Yeah, so those, those kinds of things, amen. Um, where were we? Surrender. Okay, surrender your will to God and refuse to obey your fleshly nature. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, uh, 1 through 2 tells us that giving ourselves to God is our reasonable service. You know, um, our flesh, you know. Uh, let me read it real quick. Uh, Romans 12, 1 through 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay. So presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, is our reasonable service. Amen. So we want to surrender uh, to God's will. Meditate on the attributes of God, his love, his sovereignty, his power, his wisdom, faithfulness, grace, and compassion. And I put some scriptures there, and you can add to that. You can build on that. Um, but that will really encourage you or prepare you spiritually. Begin your time of fasting and prayer with an expectant heart. You know, expect that God is going to meet you. Expect that God is going to answer your prayer. Expect that God is going to do what we're seeking him to do. You know, you can expect, you know, Lord, I, I want to experience you in a way that I haven't before, you know. Um, maybe some of you say, I, I want to have a vision. I want to, I want to have a vision of the Lord. And I'll tell you, it will, it, you know, it does shake you up. You know, most of those that uh, have see visions and things like that, it shake them up. They usually, and, and the Spirit of God usually have to say, fear not. You know, uh, some pastor always shared the story of when uh, an angel came to the foot of, uh, he was actually sleeping on a friend, on a friend's couch. And uh, he had come down to Colorado, that's where I was going to school. And uh, I had been praying for him to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all my friends were praying for him. And uh, I think at that point he had had the experience or he hadn't, but anyway, an angel had come to the foot of his bed and lifted up the sheet popped it over him to wake him up <laughs> and he said he was just he was so panicked he was so panicked at what he was seeing that uh, the angel just left it woke him up but it did tell him something it told gave him some information about what was going on with the uh, with the sister and uh, told him exactly uh, what was going on and how to pray for her but he, he often said, man, I wish I hadn't have been so scared and so nervous and just talked with the angel more, you know. But it don't usually happen like that, you know. Uh, usually you are just, ah, oh, you know, at what you're seeing. But anyway, <laughs> um, begin your time of fasting and prayer with an expectant heart. We said that, and be aware of spiritual opposition. Satan sometimes intensifies his uh, natural battle between body and spirit, meaning, you know, you'll crave stuff and smell stuff and stuff will start happening. People, when you go to work, they're all of a sudden they're gonna have food laid out and, and different things that is not normally happening to try to pull you off your mark. But you wanna stay on course, amen? Amen. amen. I'm gonna do this last one and then we'll come back and pick up. Uh, on the other points uh, next week. Uh, attend church services regularly in obedience to the word. In obedience to the word. Hebrews 10, 
24 and 25. Let's read that. And it reads, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I want you to pay attention to the fact that he says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. If the, if, if the body of believers that you are affiliated with, that you are a part of, is meeting, and it, there's no reason, no serious reason why you can't be there, you're supposed to be there. He said, don't forsake the assembling of yourself with the believers. Amen? So we are to assemble ourselves, but that also will strengthen us, especially during this time of fasting and prayer, and it will encourage us. When we come together, we can exhort come alongside one another and inspire with the truth. Uh, it's much easier to complete the fast with others of like-minded faith than by yourself. And pastor has said that, okay. So we're about three minutes before the nine o'clock hour. And so we're going to close with prayer, okay? And then we're gonna pick up next week and uh, I'll probably have some more to share with, with you. Amen? Amen? Amen. How many plan to go on this fast? All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I know it's not something that our flesh uh, feels real excited about, you know, unless you've come to a place where, you know, you're just so spiritual that you look forward to these times. <laughs> Amen. But let's bow our heads in prayer. We're going to pray uh, to close out. But I want to say if anyone is, is going through in their bodies, uh, we want to pray for you. If you're sick and...